Welcome to the Focal Point. Nina sent me a, an email introducing herself and asking if it would be possible to come do a show here. And I answered her. I said, yeah, we'd you know, like to check things out. And uh, I think it was only a week or two later, she walked in the door at a show um, oh, about a year ago. Um, was anybody here for our World Accordion Day? Anyway, Nina came in here that day and introduced herself to me, gave me her CDs and said, I'm looking to book myself here and I want you to consider me. And I thought, how can I not? So, um, so tonight we have Nina Ricci. If you put your hands together, we'll get her up here and check her out. So, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Well, I'm Nina Ritchie. I'm a folk singer and songwriter from Nashville. And it was a little dream of mine to come to this gym of St. Louis and come to the focal point and sing. So I'm going to be doing a lot of different kinds of music tonight. Um, I don't discriminate where my music comes from, which country it is, but I like to learn the history of it and to teach others about where the music came from. And I'm also a songwriter myself. I am from Nashville, and I grew up there, so it's sort of in the water. You kind of have to write songs if you're from Nashville. But I am from that Middle Tennessee area, so I get to hear a lot of different kinds of music, country music, bluegrass, and a little bit of folk music along the way. I spend a lot of time in East Tennessee, too, and sing at places like Dollywood and in Gatlinburg. So I'm going to start off with a song tonight. It's called Wildwood Flower. If you know this one, I'd be happy if you'd sing along with me. very much. Thank you. Well, I should tell you that I am sponsored by 
Deering Banjo Company, and uh, they supply me with my picks, my pro pick finger picks. And uh, I, I was figuring that I would probably start out with that song and um, sing a song called Fare Thee Well for You for the, for the next song. And it is a folk ballad. Um, I've had occasion a couple of times to meet some of the folk revival singers who were there in the 60s, and that is a lot of my interest. When I was a teenager, I started listening to folk revival music, and most of it was the most popular stuff, the stuff that kind of rose to the top. But there's a lot of folk music that never reached the, the popular level, um, or maybe it was a little too soon for it. So um, I met a lady named Carolyn Hester back in 2019. It was my first time touring, and a friend of mine who has an archive in Indiana uh, set up a, sh a show that had it featured her and me. And Carolyn Hester, I don't know if you know about her, but she's a little bit obscure herself, kind of like me. Uh, she was one of the first folk singers to, um, to get a record deal with Columbia Records, and she's credited as being the lady who gave Bob Dylan his start. And for me, that was huge to hear that, but I had never heard of her before. Um, she came from the Boston folk scene, and I'll talk a little bit later about my, my background with Boston because I am a Berklee College of Music graduate, and I did get to kind of traipse through that folk scene. But um, this is a sort of song that she would sing, and uh, it's one that Joan Baez covered, and she was um, one of my favorite and most influential folk singers to me growing up. All right, this one is Fare Thee Well, 10,000 Miles. It comes from England. And it's about a guy who's going away, and he tells his true love that he's leaving, but he will return, and she just doesn't believe that that is so. Because he says, I'm going 10,000 miles away, and that just seems a little bit far-fetched for her. So she thinks he's just pulling out on her. But he writes her this beautiful song. Fare thee well. Oh, the old 
oceans never will run dry Or the rocks melt with the sun I'll never prove false to the one I love Till love of these things be done Till all all Till all Till all these things be done Thank you very much. Can I have a little more of my voice in the monitor? Thank you very much. Check, check, check. Appreciate that a lot. OK. Sounds good to me. Well, I, I did attend Berkeley and graduated from there back in 2014. And while I was there, I had no clue about um, the folk scene that I was actually kind of in the midst of. I had been reading Joan Baez's bi biography before I went to Berkeley, but it didn't really hit home with me that I was actually standing in the place where she was, uh, where she kind of spread her wings, I guess. So she was from California, but her father brought her to Boston to pursue a job at Boston University. And um, she was supposed to be attending classes there, but instead she was skipping out and hanging out with all the other college kids. And she was very popular with the Cambridge boys. They kind of uh, were her audience when she started out. She had a family manager too that was kind of shopping her around at the time. And he went into a place called the Club 47, which was a new tea room in the Boston area in Cambridge. It was called the Club 47, and it was a jazz club. Some jazz students had come to two college girls who had opened it and um, suggested that they have jazz music, and that's not what they wanted. They wanted a true European-style uh, tea room. Well, they decided, okay, we'll let the girl play Tuesday night and just see if people take to her. Maybe folk music will catch on here. Well, it turned out that she started having a Tuesday night gig, and uh, the Club 47 is really popular because of Joan Baez, I would say. I got to play there at its new location called Club Passim, and uh, it was inspiring to me as I uh, recorded a tribute album to Joan Baez. There are some of those copies of those albums. It's called Fare Thee Well, a Joan Baez tribute. Well, after my time in, in college, I, uh, I wrote a song called Folk City, and it's about the Greenwich Village folk scene. Those scenes were kind of connected. Folk singers from the Boston scene would interchange with the Greenwich Village scene and vice versa. So I wrote this song several years ago thinking about that, that folk scene and what it means to me today as a modern-day folk singer. So here is Folk City.
Thank you very much. Well, this is a song, if you are a hardcore folky, that you may know. It was recorded by Peter, Paul, and Mary back uh, in the 80s and on, on a pretty obscure album. But it was written by a folk singer from Massachusetts. His name is Bob Frankie. It's called Alleluia, the Great Storm is Over. I like to sing this one. When, um, whenever I'm at Dollywood, I also uh, will sing over at the hotel that's nearby. It's called Dream More. And so a lot of families come through there, and kids will come up, and uh, they'll listen to songs like, um, I'll be doing a song called Kitty Alone and I. Really sweet song. But I will also sing this one when it gets bedtime. Because it's about a little girl who's on her way to sleep and there's a storm over her head. And her mama is trying to get her to go to sleep and not worry, her daddy's going to come home and everything will be all right. song. Anybody out there? I think I saw a hand back there. Oh, wow, wonderful. Even when I sing it in Dollywood, we have so many people that come through uh, that are from different places. They're all tourists, so uh, occasionally I'll get somebody who knows the song. It's always very impressive to me. 
And uh, same way with a song called Donna Donna. I'll do that one later too. I'm, I'm kicking things down the road a little bit, but they're worth waiting for, I think. Okay. This one is also one that I like singing when I'm at Dollywood because it is a very uh, a fun song that a lot of people seem to know, and I've sung it in other places as well. And oftentimes I will get teachers, especially uh, kindergarten teachers, who will come up to me after and say, I know that song. I taught it as a poem to my kids in my class. In fact, it, I did one show, and she said, I just taught it to them the other day. It's a song called Froggy Winnicorton. How many of y'all know it? song. Woohoo! Well, most people sing along for the first couple of verses with me. There's so many different versions. I learned this one off a Bruce Springsteen album. How many of y'all have heard of We Shall Overcome the Seeger Sessions? Bruce's tribute to Beat Seeger. Anybody? Okay, good, good. Occasionally, I meet people who know that one, but it was one of those obscure albums, and I tend to do those, tend to uh, find the best songs on those obscure albums. A lot of people don't think he's a, a folk singer type, but he was in Greenwich Village back in the 70s and apparently had an affinity for Pete. Well, I came across that album as a, about a 16-year-old girl. It was at my local library. I'm going to be doing a concert for them coming up. The Donaldson Branch Library. I'd spin those uh, record racks, and I would find CDs that I wanted to take home and learn from. And uh, my mom said, you know, you really should listen to Bruce Springsteen. I was in, I was listening to rock and roll at the time. I didn't know who I was. I was trying to figure it out, what kind of music I liked. Well, I came across the Seeger Sessions album, and I thought, wow, that's some beautiful Americana music. I didn't even know the word Americana. I didn't know what it, what it meant or anything, but I just knew that I loved the sound of it. So there was a lot of uh, different bluegrass covers, some gospel covers, and just some folk music. Once I realized what it was, I thought, man, I would like to sing folk music myself. So this is one of the songs that I liked off that album. If you don't know it, it's about a frog who's in love with a mouse, the niece of a rat, and he's got to ask for permission to marry her. Froggy went according and he did right, uh-huh. Froggy went according and he did right, uh-huh. Froggy went according and he did right with a sword and pistol by his side, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now he went down to Miss Mousie's door, uh-huh. He went down to Miss Mousie's door, uh-huh. He went down to Miss Mousie's door where he had often been before, uh-huh. Took Miss Mousie upon his knee, uh-huh. Said, Miss Mousie, will you marry me, uh-huh. Without my Uncle Rat's consent, I wouldn't marry the president, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uncle Rat, he gave his consent, uh-huh. Uncle Rat, he gave his consent, uh-huh. Uncle Rat, he gave his consent, and the weasel wrote the publishment, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, where will the wedding supper be, uh-huh? Was a flying moth, uh huh? First come in was a flying moth, uh huh? First come in was a flying moth, and he laid out the tablecloth, uh huh? Uh huh. Next come in was a juni bug, uh huh? Next come in was a juni bug, uh huh? Next come in was a juni bug, she brought the whiskey in a water jug, uh huh? Uh huh. Big black 
snake, uh-huh. Next come in was a big black snake, uh-huh. Next come in was a big black snake. He chased them all into the lake, uh-huh. Uh-huh. A little piece of corn bread laying on the shelf, uh-huh. Little piece of corn bread laying on the shelf, uh-huh. Little piece of corn bread laying on the shelf. If you want to hear more, you can sing it yourself, uh-huh. If you want to hear more, you can sing it yourself, because it's already like 11 verses long. <laughs> well, you shall find out throughout the evening that I like a lot of quirky songs. And uh, this is one that is a little bit quirky. It comes from Ireland. It's St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Thank you very much. I actually just came back from Ireland. And uh, it's beautiful. It's green, like everybody says it is. Those, the green shamrock shores, they call it the Emerald Isle. It's very gorgeous. I was there for a conference called Your Roots Are Showing. I was invited to showcase there, and it was just amazing to meet so many people uh, from around the world. They had Italians, they had Spaniards, they had uh, English, Irish, Scottish, and uh, yeah, Americans like me, and some definitely a lot of Canadians. And this is one of the songs that I sang while I was there. It's called Kitty Alone and I. It originates in Ireland, uh, and it came over here, and it was changed somewhat, actually quite a bit. Um, I learned this song from a folk singer named Tom Brousseau. I was out in North Dakota last year. He brought me out there to sing for folks in a, a little place called Medora. If you haven't been there, you should go. It's just beautiful in the buttes. And he sang this song, and I thought, oh, boy, I love that. I've got to sing it myself. So I started learning it. It's about a guy who's in love with a girl, his girlfriend, Kitty. Whenever I sing this at Dollywood, a lot of the kids will go, if they've already heard me sing, they'll say they want the song Cat, because they think it's about cats, but it's really about a girl. And these two are both square dancers, so he's singing about a date that he's going to take Kitty on.
It is such a fun song. I had to learn it. Sometimes it's like that. I remember hearing Linda Ronstadt at one time saying if she heard a song and she loved it, she had to sing it. And I have found that along the way, too. Certain songs just hit you, and you, you have to sing them, and sometimes they're just made for you. And one of the first songs that I started out with in folk music was a song called I Never Will Marry. And this one has been a funny one to sing. When I first started listening to it, I'm like, oh, tearful, I'm 16 listening to this song. And it's beautiful, an English folk song. And, uh, and then I started singing it in Gatlinburg, and there was a, a bass player who was standing by listening to me. And he had his arms crossed, and he had this pensive look on his face. And he goes, after I sing the song, he goes, is that a life decision you're never going to marry? And I'm like, it's just a song. And, but he, he gets into a more pensive mode, and he thinks about it, and he goes, well, maybe I should have never married because I've been married four times. He goes, maybe I'll never marry again. And then he goes, well, probably not. He just got married for his fifth time. <laughs> and the other funny thing about this, it was sung by Linda Ronstadt at one time when she was in the trio with Amy Lou Harris and Dolly Parton. And uh, Linda never married. So I'm getting the idea that maybe I should stop singing this song. It happens to be my mother's favorite song. Mommy out there? Woohoo! Yeah, she's the lady who's clapping. <laughs> I don't know why she likes it so much. Maybe she just wants to keep me around for a little longer. I don't know. All right. Well, here's I Never Will Marry. Please don't cry. <laughs> it's a beautiful song. If Okay. One thing I love about folk songs is the faithfulness. Even though she can't have the man that she wants, and uh, he's really not worthy of her, to be honest, um, she won't have anyone else, and she, uh, she lays that down in a song. So just love it.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate that a lot. Well, I'm going to sing a song now that I think a lot of you know, and um, I will take a little intermission after this one. And I think it's one you will, you'll know and you'll be able to sing with me on. It's a song called Donna Donna. I, I picked up this one in college. I knew it in English, but I had to have a song that was a foreign language song. Uh, I w I'm a classically trained vocalist at, from Berkeley, and that was one of the requirements was to do a foreign language song. So this one is a Yiddish song. And I have since, from being on the road, I, uh, I get to meet a whole lot of different people. So um, I took this song down with me to Florida. And a lot of people have come from New York down to Florida. And a lot of them are of Jewish heritage. So I started singing this song. And they told me afterwards, they said, you know, when I was a kid, we went to Yiddish theater. I just mentioned it was a Yiddish theater song. That's all I knew from Wikipedia. That's what I had learned. And so it must be true, but what does it mean? Well, Yiddish theater was a bit like vaudeville, but it was all in Yiddish. Uh, and it's, that's a fascinating language. It's a blend of Hebrew and German. And so I'll sing a little bit of the song in Yiddish, but of course you won't know what I'm saying. Uh, so I will switch over to English. So it goes like this. We've been leaked All right, anybody want to translate that for me? <laughs> well, I knew somebody who was um, an Orthodox Jew, and I knew he knew a little bit of Yiddish. So I asked him, how's my Yiddish? And he goes, mm -hmm, yeah, it's, it's good. I don't think he knew a whole lot of it, but he knew enough to get by, I guess. And, uh, and so I, I didn't know what I was saying, but I learned it very well from listening to a lady named Nehama Hindel, and she was from Israel. So this song, I just, okay, y'all, I'm a vegetarian. I don't know if there's any other vegetarians out here. I am not biased in any way, but I sang this song for some cattlemen out in western Missouri this past week, and we didn't tell them until after that we were vegetarians, my mom and I both are. And I, uh, I was born a vegetarian, so I don't know what I'm missing, is what I like to say. Well, this song is about a cow on its way to market, and the conversation, it is a talking cow, the conversation it has with its farmer. All right, if you know it, sing along on the choruses. Swallow 
thank you everybody for coming here to Focal Point. I really appreciate you being here. And I'm going to take a little break and I hope to meet some of y'all uh, during the intermission. I'll be back with some more traditional and original music. Thank you very much. Yeah. I am going to bring Nina back up on stage and we'll hear some great music. anything you could leave the lights on for the audience and I could be able to see some faces. I enjoy that a lot. It really adds to the performance for me because then I get to kind of gauge how I'm doing with you guys and and uh, you can do the same for me. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to start off with a song. It's called All Around My Hat. And generally speaking, I wear some pretty, not big hats, but uh, some western hats, some fedoras and that kind of thing. So I like doing this song sort of for that reason because it's, it's about a girl who wears a hat and I'm a girl who wears hats, so it makes sense. I may have to move this a little bit. It originates in England and a band named, uh, by the name of Steel Eye Span recorded it. And the kind of neat thing that they did, they came in in the 70s and they were still doing that traditional music. So we, we kind of recognize about two waves of folk music, the kind of 40s, 50s era when Pete Seeger was making music. And then things kind of went into hiding for a little while and uh, all the folk singers started playing in schoolhouses. So those kids grew up and they started playing folk music. So we had the 1960s folk revival. But then it just kept reviving and reviving, and I think we're in the midst of one right now as well. So th this song came in the 70s with Steel Eye Span, and what they did to kind of add their own um, flair and to interest the youths in the music, they added rock, a rock band <laughs> to, uh, to what they were doing with the folk music. So this song, you're not gonna believe it has a rock band behind it by the way that it sounds. So it's about a girl who loves a guy who isn't worthy of her, but she's smart enough to realize it. All right, here's All Around My Hat. Oh. 
wonderful song for uh, dating advice if you should need it. Well, it is St. Patrick's Day, so I'm going to do another song that is of Irish origins. It comes from the band The Dubliners, and what they did was they heard songs that were kind of migrating around the, the streets of Dublin back in the 60s and 70s, and they decided to compose a song based on the lyrics that they were hearing. So it's, it's a very sad song. It's called My Boy Willie, but it's also very beautiful.
Thank you very much. Well, I'm going to sing a song now. I'm going to kind of jump genres a little bit from an Irish sound to a more of a bluegrass sound. I, um, I wrote this song when I was living in the hills of North Georgia right after college. It's a song called Bird on a String. I was just about to head back to Nashville because I found out it's really hard to sustain a career if you don't have a Wi-Fi connection that works. And, well, that's what happens in the mountains. I was trying to upload videos, and it was taking five hours, and then it wouldn't upload, and it would get halfway, and it stopped. Oh, well. So we headed back to Nashville. I grew up there, um, so it's, it's always home to me, even if I don't actually have a home there. My mom and I have been on the road for about four years, and we, uh, we moved out of our rental house. We moved into a storage unit, and we have been just traveling the U.S. Uh, over the last four years. All right, so anyway, I uh, was about to go back to Nashville, and I thought, well, if I'm going to be singing on all those writers' rounds and open mics, I'm going to have to have a song to bring with me. I want something new to take with me to the open mics. And so I thought, what is more Nashville than the classic cheating song? <laughs> It's true, but I wanted to have something with the potential for a positive outcome. So I wrote this song about a true wife, her untrue husband, and her creative way of bringing back her wandering love. And uh, I had some people asking me, well, how'd you come up with that song? And they wanted a little more detail, because the lyrics go by fast, but I always try to, to make sure that I have all the details within the song. So I try to give people a little background on it. So this lady, she finds out that her husband is not being true to her, uh, but she decides to give him kind of a, uh, a way to return to her if he should want to. So she sends him out into the hills with all the things that he might need packed up in a sack. And in the top of the sack is a bird, and the bird is a homing pigeon. And as you may well know, homing pigeons know their way back home, and that's exactly where she wants him. So she ties a string to the bird's foot, and at the end of the string is his wedding ring. So that's Bird on a String. Now you know. Change what you do, oh honey. Nothing will change what you do. Well, I've been a true wife and I'll carry it through. There's a few things you should shoulder on the road. I'll pack something to eat and a picture of me, and I'll wait each night until you come home, oh honey. For you till you come home In the top of your sack There is a bird on a string And tied to the end It's your golden ring All the maps across the land Aren't worth as much as a bird in the hand Take a homing pigeon with you When you go When you look to see just what I packed for you If you're gonna be cheating, there's no sense in starving too There's enough in there to get you back home Oh, honey, I'll take you back when you come home In the top of your sack, there is a bird on a string And tied to the end, it's your golden ring All the maps across the land aren't worth as much as a bird in the hand Take a homing pigeon with you when you go Her blue eyes guide you like a beacon on the water Her arms reach out like the last stretch toward home She's a fragile mystery but Maps 
across the land Aren't worth as much as a bird in the hand Take a homing pigeon with you when you go Whoa, whoa Take a homing pigeon with you when you go In the top of your sack There is a bird on a string And tied to the end It's your gun and ring All the maps across the land Aren't worth as much as a bird Take a homing pigeon with you when you go. What? Take a homing pigeon with you when you go. Thank you very much. Well, sometimes my mom has to remind me to do my own songs because I get so um, hung up on those traditional folk songs that I love so much. I forget that I love my own songs, too. Well, um, we have occasion to travel a lot, and we spent two months recently in South Texas, which is a very fascinating place to be. A lot of different culture, culture blends and everything, uh, but another place that is, uh, is like that is Louisiana. And while I was living in Boston, uh, I don't know why I was contemplating Louisiana, but I started composing this song. It's called Sickle in the Cane, and I actually got to go to Louisiana recently, passing through, and uh, we went into the sugar cane fields. And there was a man working out there. Uh, he had come from Puerto Rico. He said, God sent me here. And uh, he has been working as he had never worked in sugar cane before, but there he was. And, uh, and there's a sweet smell to the air when, uh, when all of that sugar is being refined but uh, he pulled a stalk off for us cut it down um, they do things a little more modern these days but they were stacking all of that sugar cane on a big a big uh, I don't know what you call it I'm just a city girl uh, <laughs> uh, but he brought us a stalk of it and we traveled around with it for a while and it kind of um, got me to thinking about this song and I knew a guy who was telling me that the sugar cane is more sweet than your regular table sugar. And he said that when he was a child, he and his friends would uh, pick up those stalks and they would cut between the rings. They would cut those stalks and, uh, and then they would carry the sugar cane in their pockets and they would eat it all the time and basically rot their teeth out on sweet sugar cane. So it reminded me of this song. And uh, I hope you like it, Sickle in the Cane. Sickle in the cane, sickle in 
the cane Plowing in the heat, picking in the rain Lucky day is here and the wagons each to pull The harvest land is bare but their pockets will be full Workers in a line, all hands to the field. Everybody ready. All hands. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I'm going to sing a song that I think a lot of you know. And uh, I had a request for a song that somebody might know who likes 70s music. And so um, I'll sing this one, and you probably know it if you like Peter, Paul, and Mary. Um, or if you're a Bob Dylan fan. Are there any Bob Dylan fans out here? Woohoo! <laughs> well, I always kind of try to poll the crowd and find out who likes Bob Dylan because you make friends that way very easily. Well, this is a song called Don't Think Twice, It's All Right. If you know it, sing it along with me.
twice, it's all right. Well, thank you very much. Well, you know how that song came about? There was another song that was uh, recorded by Paul Clayton. It was uh, called, Who's Gonna Buy You Ribbons When I'm Gone? And uh, I think of a song, it's called Storms Are on the Ocean. I picked this one up uh, from a lady who is related to the Carter family, a daughter of June Carter. And uh, it, it's kind of got a, a relation to that song too. So it's called Storms Are on the Ocean. It comes from England. The Carter family recorded it themselves. And then she, uh, she came back to Nashville and she started recording some of these old folk songs. And she just does a marvelous job of them. And uh, I took to this one immediately and had to learn it myself. Thank you very much. 
See what a beautiful song that is. Well, I'm going to do another Carter family song. Someone in western Missouri uh, was saying to me, you know, you could just keep singing Carter family songs because they're just always so good. And sometimes they're a little bleak because of the, the way things were in Appalachia back in the day and maybe somewhat a little bit now. But there's always like a bright side to the songs. And this one's called You've Been a Friend to Me. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this song and I'm going to do one more song after that. And it'll be an original song. It's a fun one. I think you'll like. Both of these are fun. All right. I like to sing this one uh, whenever I'm singing to my fans on the internet. You've been a friend to me. Tossing down the troubled stream of time Since first I saw your smiling face And youth was in its prime Oh, I'll ne'er forget where'er I roam Wherever you may be If ever I have had a friend You've been that friend to me everybody. I have one last song for you, and I think you'll like it. I sing this one usually to end my sets, and uh, it's one I tribute to my Aunt Margaret. In 2019, it was my first year touring, and so we kept it close by. We went down to North Georgia, where my mom's family's from, and we stayed with my Aunt Margaret and Uncle William. And uh, they were housing us for a little while while we were traveling between Athens and Dalton and Chattanooga. And uh, I came into her house, and she said, I want to show you my jewelry collection. And that is music to a niece's ears, especially one who, who shares the interest of sparkly things. I'm wearing sparkles tonight. Anybody else like sparkles out there? Jewelry? Aha! Uh -huh. Honesty out there. Good. <laughs> well, we all must be a little bit cro part crow, I'd say. Well, uh, she said that, and I thought... She wants to show me all the crown jewels. Well, that's before I went to Ireland and realized, oh, well, the uh, crown jewels belong to the Queen of England. I still sang the song there, but you know how they feel about England and all. <laughs> well, uh, I hope you like this one. It's a good one to end the evening on, I think. Margaret said she'd show me all the crown jewels and I glass loop well magnify the light and I can't wait till I get the glitter in my eyes glitter in my eyes glitter in my eyes Margaret's got leather covered snake skin trunk she told me to appraise and throw away the junk it's hard to see the diamonds they're all mixed in 
With the custom costume brooches and the riffraff shins All the crown jewels, all the crown jewels Margaret said she'd show me all the crown jewels And my glass loop will magnify the light And I can't wait till I get the glitter in my eyes Glitter in my eyes, glitter in my eyes Gin and a genie in the facets of a gym And I fall under their enchantments I don't need to steal Cause I eat with my eyes They're filled to the brim with little flicker lights All the crown jewels, all the crown jewels Margaret said she'd show me all the crown jewels And I glass loop will magnify the light And I can't wait till I get the glitter in my eyes Glitter in my eyes Glitter in my eyes Polish ring A Polish Thank you, everybody. It's been wonderful entertaining you at Focal Point. Thank you.